Good day, Bermuda. My name is Hector Quinones, and I have the privilege of pastoring the Warwick Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we worship God. We're located right here at 92 South Road in Warwick. You can also catch us on Facebook at Warwick SDA Church BDA. Our website is sdachurchwarwick.org. I'd like to share with you our series, Last Day Events. It's going to be a series of Bible studies focusing on the second coming of Jesus. Our first message for today will be the star of Revelation. I invite you to bow your heads with me as in a word of prayer. Father God, please anoint these lips, mind, and heart that the words that I say may be acceptable unto thee. Touch the ears of those who would hear your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, some of you might be wondering, why should we be studying the last day events? The signs of Jesus Christ coming. What are going to be the final events that will take place? Well, it's very simple. So many people today are very worried that this is the end of the world. They have watched so many movies, read so many books, listened to so many voices that they don't know what, if anything, the Bible has to say. I have great news for you. The Bible assures you of the second coming of Jesus Christ and the events that will culminate just before his second coming and what will happen thereafter. I'd like to share these messages with you and this Bible study with you. I hope that you will get a piece of paper, a pen, and even grab a hold of your Bible and look up these verses. You'll see that we will be posting verses up on our screen that are meant to help you in your study and encourage you to write them down, search them for yourself, pause, play as often as you would like this study in the hopes that you will get a better understanding of God's love for you. I understand that so many of us are concerned today. I mean, we are living way past the year 2000. Do you remember the first international Armageddon that people thought was? It was Y2K. Do you recall when people believed that computers were going to crash and airplanes were going were to fall out from the sky and so many horrible and, and apocalyptic things would happen and people predicted that these were in the Bible and so many people were misled because the Bible never spoke about those things. The Bible does speak about how the end will come, but it's not that way. And then do you recall 2012 when the Mayan uh, apocalyptic prophecy was taking hold of the world and people thought that the end would come somewhere around 2012? Well, <laughs> we're 2020. The end didn't come then. Why? Because that's not what the Bible said. And finally today with COVID-19 and what's going on today in the worldwide pandemic and people wondering how we're going to survive and if humanity is going to survive. You've watched too many Hollywood movies. You've listened to too many other people. How about we follow what the Bible says? Because after all, the Bible was inspired by God. How can you be so sure? Well, if you go along with me in these Bible studies, you're going to find out for yourself that this book written over 2,000 years ago, and that's just the New Testament. If we were talking about the Old Testament, we'd have to go into four and 5,000 years ago. The, the words found herein are incredibly accurate and to the point by the minute. Now, I do know that today many people would like to debate as to whether or not God is even in tune with our world, as if we threw him out of his own house, as it were. Well, you'd be interested to know that Peter wrote these words. You can find them in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 4. Read along with me, please. Most of all, here is what you must understand. In the last days, people will make fun of the truth. They will laugh at it. They will follow their own evil desires. Hold on. Allow me to ask you this one question. Is this not an accurate portrayal of what's going on today? Please observe that Peter, inspired by God, wrote that this is going to happen in the last days. People making fun of the truth. People will laugh at the truth. And they will follow their own evil desires. Is that not what's 
happening today? What else will these evil, wicked people say? Verse 4, the Bible says, they will say, where is the re this return he promised? Everything goes on in the same way it has since our people of long ago died. In fact, it has continued this way since God first created everything. Now, that's an exaggeration, isn't it? Because today we have the internet. I don't recall people long ago having the internet. Today we have holograms. I don't recall people long ago having holograms. Today people are able to travel intercontinental distances in matter of hours. I recall a time when this would take months, if not years. Well, I don't mean that I personally recall those days, but I do Read my history books. How about you? And we have such advances in engineering, advances in technology, advances in medicine. We even have advances in diseases, as is evident today. Is it not? It would leave many to wonder, is God even aware of what's going on? One author, Russell Baker, uh, syndicated columnist long ago, he wrote the following, I am sitting 93 million miles from the sun on a rounded rock, which is spinning at the rate of a thousand miles an hour and roaring through space to no one knows where to keep a rendezvous with nobody knows what for nobody knows why. And all around me, whole continents are drifting aimlessly over the planet. I am sitting here on this spinning, speeding rock surrounded by four billion people, eight planets, one awesome lot of galaxies, nuclear bombs enough to kill me 30 times over, mountains of handguns, frozen food. I am being swept along in the whole galaxy's insane dash toward the far wall of the universe. And as I sit here, 93 million miles from the sun, I am feeling absolutely miserable. I feel sorry for Mr. Baker, syndicated columnist. I feel very, very sorry for him. As a matter of fact, I feel sorry for all of these individuals who feel that way. I, too, once felt that way. I thought that the accruements of scholarship, I thought that the um, accruements of sports cars and wealth and, and property was going to give me all the happiness that I could find. Sadly to say, they did not. But it's a sad, it's a bitter, sweet sad. It's bitter because my hopes were quickly dashed, but it's sweet because I found my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope to introduce you to him by way of prophecy. You, you, you got to understand the following, that if God is real, he has to know what's going to happen. And if God knows what's going to happen, he should have shared it with us in his book. This concept, this understanding of God and God's ability to communicate with us is not lost on me. As a matter of fact, uh, Bernard McGinn, specialist in the University of Chicago Divinity School, wrote that over the past 30 years or more, scholarship has been devoted to apocalypticism, last day events, then in the last 300 years. Did you catch that? People are more interested today in what the Bible says about the future. Now, I understand that you're going to ask me, well, why don't I share what the book of Quran says? Well, because the book of Quran really doesn't have prophecy other than that God's going to return. You're going to ask me, well, what about Mormonism? Mormonism has been shown to be a book that they wrote on themselves. But regardless of that, it really doesn't have any prophecy. And all the prophecy that it does have, the minute prophecy has been shown to be all erroneous. Finally, Confucianism and Buddhism, none of them have prophecy. They're wise sayings. The only book that purports to tell you what is going to happen in the future is the 
Bible, the Judaic Christian Bible. Both the Old and the New Testament all have prophecies in them. And in the Old Testament, every single one of the prophecies contained therein have been found to be 100% correct. And in the New Testament, the prophecies regarding the New Testament, you could find that they've all been incredibly accurate. I mean, up to the point of 100%. And the prophecies that are still yet to be fulfilled are eerily coming true now. I mean, I, I, I imagine that you remember something about the mark of the beast and nobody being able to buy or... Well, how could you buy, how could you be prohibited from buying or selling? Well, I do know that there are licenses that the government has, but has anybody heard just recently about this push towards electronic currency? We'll be studying more about that in the future. So why should we study the Bible and not books of Nostradamus, which have been sold by the millions and people have been posting them online and on all different types of social media apps. Well, how about the following? How about the fact that they're so vague that you can make anything sound as though it was a prophecy of Nostradamus and the majority of his prophecies to the point of 99% have all come out to be false. None of them have come true. Well, how about books such as Hal Lindsey's Planet Earth or Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins' book, Left Behind, or The Omega Code, or the over 239,000 websites all dedicated just to end-time prophecy. Can we trust any one of those? I have a suggestion for you. Since they all consider themselves to be Christian, why don't we all look at the one thing that we do agree on? That this is God's message for the world. How about we study what the Bible says and let's not look at what somebody else says. Now, I know this is of incredible importance. Time Magazine just recently published um, uh, articles containing about regarding the second coming of Christ. Newsweek, just before its closing, had also issues regarding the second coming of Christ. As a matter of fact, in Newsweek alone, it reported that over 40% of U.S. adults believe the world will end as foretold in a battle of Armageddon between Jesus and the Antichrist. Stop, hold on, allow me to ask you, what is Armageddon? And what is this battle? Because many people believe that it is a conventional military warfare done with military airplanes and military tanks and military weapons. Uh, pitted between some forces of the Western industrialized nations and some forces in the Eastern or the Asian industrialized nation. Is that the battle of Armageddon? Why don't we look and see what the Bible says? Muslims all have their beliefs and Jews have also their beliefs. But here's the one thing that we all do agree on, the three of us, that Jesus was a real person and he was sent by God. As a matter of fact, the only th another thing that we all do agree with is that you can't trust soothsayers or astrologers or magicians. You can't trust these people who are into the new age cultism. We all agree on that because we all know that God does not deal with those individuals. Now, I know you're going to wonder again about Nostradamus. Let me remind you of the, the quotes from Nostradamus. Notice how vague and ambiguous they are. Clashes among racial and ethnic and nationalist groups in Eastern Europe climax with the use of nuclear weapons. Notice, please, how ambiguous it was about this Eastern Europe and clashes against these racial ethnic groups and nationalist groups. Please observe that it has not ended up in nuclear weapons. As a matter of fact, what we have seen is Europe coalescing to become one government. And how about the Great Pyramid Prophecy? It 
quoted the following, the Earth's magnetic pulse would show signs of becoming unstable, suggesting the beginning of a polar shift that will literally knock the planet on its ear, turning north to south and east to west in a matter of days. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of happy that that prophecy did not come true. What about that Ayan Mayan, ancient Mayan prophecy that we were so concerned about in 2012? Well, one of the prophecies contained in 2012 with this Mayan prophecy was that the earth, hole in the Earth's ozone layer would quadruple in size, exposing virtually the entire southern hemisphere to lethal levels of ultraviolet radiation and sparking the mass migration north of more than a billion people. Are you, are you catching this? Please observe that all of these prophecies have come to naught. They are all false. They are all the illusions of grandeur of people believing that they have powers that they really don't, such as Edgar Casey. Some of you might remember him. He was a very commonly used prognosticator of the future. He was a spiritualist. He was somebody who espoused belief in God and believed that he received clairvoyance and, and ability to tell into the future. One of the things that he wrote was that there would be a major financial crash in January 2000. Hmm. Vicious ice storms, electrical storms would break the United States and Western Europe, killing a million or more senior citizens and other innocent people who lost their homes or incomes in the January crash. Please observe that he tried to be specific he intended to give even the year and the month, and we all know what happened in Y2K, didn't we? We, we? we do remember. We do remember what happened during Y2K. Nothing. Nothing. January 1, 2001. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. Aren't you glad? Especially senior citizens. <laughs> Aren't you glad? What about Janice Seymour from the United States, a, a reported futurist and syndicated columnist? She wrote that terrorists would attack New York City with sarin and the deadliest nerve gas known to man. So many citizens are dead by April 2000 from violence and disease that the death toll is never established. Would you like to thank God that all of these individuals were found to be false prophets. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that in the last days there would become, there would come false prophets and that we would hear of wars and rumors of wars. But he told us that the end was not yet. Yet still so many people want to focus on what the end is. Allow me to share with you that unlike the predictions of the psychics, the Bible has been accurate for more than 3,500 years. That the fulfilled Bible prophecy verifies to the truthfulness of God's word and gives us confidence that the future is actually in his hand. I invite you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9, where God invites us to remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. Do you see that? God promises to inform us what is going to happen. How does he inform us? He informs us through his prophets. Amos chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. As a matter of fact, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, the Bible says, And we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed, as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn, the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. God has given to us the events that will take place just before his coming. The culminating and climactic events that are going to take place just before his coming. And they were not meant to be sealed. They were not meant to be feared. They were not meant to be closed up and they were not meant to be confused with human understanding and human wisdom. They were meant to be revealed to us 
So that way we could be sure of God's love and compassion towards us. Revelation chapter 22, verse 10, the Bible says, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of the book, for the time is at what? At hand. During these lectures, during these studies, we are going to real, we are going to understand fully the mark of the beast. We will understand the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We will understand the three angels' message and those of the three demons. We will also understand Babylon and the woman of Revelation chapter 12. We will understand all of these things, but we will not lose focus on who is the star of revelation? What is the hope of the revelation? Who should be our, who should be the focus of our studies when we are studying revelation? It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters. It's not the revelation of the beast. It's not the revelation of the antichrist. It's not the revelation of the dragon. It's not the revelation of the false prophet. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And God gave them gave it to show his servants the things which must shortly take place, sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John. Do you catch that? Do you see that? It's a revelation. From whom? From God. And who did Jesus give it to? He gave it to his angel. And what did the angel do with it? He brought it down to John and John is supposed to share it with us and that is why we have it in our holy bibles what does revelation mean revelation means it's a revealing it's an unfolding it's not supposed to be mysterious it's not supposed to be confusing it's not supposed to be confounding it's supposed to be simple and when we read the bible and we look at what the bible says it becomes incredibly simple Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Please observe that God told John to write the following, that these things were to be shown, to show his servants the things which must shortly, what? Take place. Now, when you read through the book of Revelation, you're going to see some images, and we're going to explain these images. We're going to explain the symbols. We're going to see what the Bible says about every single one of them. But why should we also study the Bible? Should we just study so that way we can have a better understanding of the events that are going to take place? No, as a matter of fact, we're reading them and we're studying them to be blessed. Please observe Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. Grace be to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Now guess what, my brothers and sisters? You're going to receive a blessing because you're going to get to know the Jesus who was. You're going to get to know the Jesus who is. You're going to get to know the Jesus who is to come because in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, he says, behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will what? See him. Russell Baker believes that he is alone and maybe he is alone because he never accepted a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can do that too. You can do that right now if you want to. God wants you to know that you are not an orphan. You are not alone. You are not destined for self-destruction and famines and pestilence will not have the final word. Natural disasters will not dash our hope. Sickness will come to an end. Sorrow will have its ending and death will no longer claim its victims. Praise God. Revelation can give you hope and courage to face tomorrow. Praise God. Revelation can give you the prophecies that end in the same place before the throne of God. Praise be to God. Revelation chapter 5, verse 13. The Bible says, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forevermore. Pastor, are we going to study the seven last seals? Yes, we will study those seven last seals. But I want you to observe, please, where those seven last seals end. The Bible says, Revelation chapter 7, 14 through 15. These are the ones who come out of the what? 
great tribulation. Do you want to know how you can come out of the great tribulation? Study these prophecies with me. The Bible says, therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his what? Temple, praise be to God. Somebody's going to ask me, well, pastor, are we going to study the seven trumpets? Yes, we're going to study the seven trumpets. But I want you to know what's going to happen at the end of our study of the seven trumpets. We're going to find out that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign for how long? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, ever, ever to the Everest as one child one time told me. These are the messages of Revelation. Will we study about the beast and the Antichrist and all of those other things? Yeah, we're going to see them incidentally. We're going to see how God is going to triumph over all of them. And because he will triumph, so shall we. You see, Revelation is a book of hope my brothers and sisters. It's the hope of a new kingdom. It's the hope of a new society. It's the hope in a new leader. It's the hope in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will see how God will win over the mark of the beast. How is he going to do that? Simple. Have you ever heard of the seal of God? See, those who have the seal of God, they won't have the mark of the beast. Those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will not have the mark of the beast. How? How is all of this going to happen? Study with me. But please observe Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. I got news for you, my brothers and sisters. We are not living in the times of the last plagues. We are living today in the signs of the end. How do we know the difference? Because it's simple. Revelation 16 explains to you what the seven last plagues are. And we will study every single one of them. And please observe that the final one it comes is the second coming of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? When Christ comes to take us home. And what does he do then? Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. The Bible says, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Don't you want to be there? Don't you want to be there when Jesus comes back and picks up every single one of those who have made a decision for him? Even the dead in Christ, the Bible says, will rise and all of us will go and travel with God to heaven and be there with him for a thousand years. Pastor, what are you talking about? Study with me. Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. God says he will make all things new. During that time that we are there in heaven, what is God going to do? He is going to reveal to us all secrets. He will give to us a new sense of joy, purpose, spiritual power, forgiveness, and happiness. And we will walk the streets of gold with him. Praise be to God. And then we will come back here to this earth and we will dwell with him forever and ever and ever. Now, how will all of these things happen? How will all of these things take place? Well, I hope you will come and study with me tomorrow in our next Bible study. I hope that you will tune in to our next study tomorrow as we look at the signs of Jesus' coming. But just before we do that, I would like to invite you today, if you haven't done so, to join with me in a word of prayer. Maybe you would like to give your heart over to the Lord. Maybe you would like to invite him into your heart. Maybe you would like to ask him to give you some of that sense of peace that we so desperately need. I remember a time when I used to think that if I obtained a college degree, I would be happy. And then I thought, well, maybe if I received this promotion at my job, I would find happiness. 
And then I thought maybe if I had this car, German made car, I would find happiness. I would have this really great apartment, I would find happiness. It's amazing how all of those things that I thought would give me happiness were only illusions. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you do, I'd like to share with you what happened when I met Jesus. I found the happiness that I longed for. I found the happiness that I sought for. I found the happiness that I had dreamt of. I found a friend. I found somebody who loves me just as I am, but loves me so much that is willing to help me become my best self. Would you like to meet that person? If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm inviting you to bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. If you're not ready to make that decision, I invite you to watch our next message and study along with us. But for those of you who would like to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, pray along with me. Father God, I accept your son, Jesus. I accept the fact that I need him. I accept the fact that I have made so many terrible mistakes. And I accept the fact that I need to learn what it is that you want me to do. Please take my life. It is yours. And grant me forgiveness. And remember my name when you come. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have made this prayer, I encourage you to contact me on our Facebook page or via our website. My name is Hector Quinones, and I have the privilege of pastoring the Warwick Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we worship God. I hope to see you when this quarantine is over. God bless you. Bye-bye.